Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back for another video, and today we're going to be continuing our German conquest. This one is titled 13 Things You Need to Know Before Going to Germany. Make sure you guys hit the like button, hit subscribe, and let's get it. You want to go to Germany? Here are some things you need to know before you go from a German native. Servus and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but have been living in Cincinnati, Ohio off and on since 2016. Now, traveling isn't really a thing right now, but I know that many of you can't wait until that's going to be possible again. And I know that many of you are planning your future trips in your heads. And for all of you who've always wanted to visit Germany, or even move to Germany, I'm sharing some things that you should definitely know before you go. These are things that I usually tell friends who go to Germany for the first time, but I'm sure that many of you guys could benefit from this as well. The Euro. The first one sounds pretty obvious, but believe me, people forget about this all the time. Different countries have different outlets and voltages. So if you're from the US, you'll need to bring or buy an adapter if you want to use your electrical devices because your American plugs won't fit into a German outlet. We also have a voltage of 220, 230 volt in Germany, whereas it's only 120 in the US. And not all electronic devices can handle the switch. So be sure that you do some research about that before you go. Especially hair dryers and hair straighteners usually don't work with a different voltage. I actually broke a hair straightener once because I tried using my German one in the US and that just made it stop working. What does work usually though is laptops and phone chargers and those kind of things. And even though I am obviously aware that the outlets are different, I totally forgot about it this past Christmas when I went home to be with my family because I got a new laptop recently in the US that came with an American charger and I totally forgot that for the first time ever I would need an adapter that goes from American plug to German plug and not the other way around. But luckily my dad has a bunch of travel adapters and one of them actually fit. Then of course we also use a different currency in Germany. It's the Euro, just like in many other countries in the European Union. And at least compared to the US, we also use a different measurement system, the metric system with kilometers instead of miles, etc. Uh, you along with the rest of the world. Oh my god, I still it still pisses me off that we use the imperial system. It still pisses me off. Like uh, even, even though the US started. really is the odd one out here. The next point causes a pretty big shock for many people who visit Germany for the first time. Stores are closed on Sundays, even grocery stores. So make sure to plan ahead because the only places you'll be able to find any groceries on a Sunday are stores at train stations and gas stations. This has a Christian background, but it also has to do with workers' rights. In Germany, we believe that everyone should be able to get a rest day on Sunday and spend time with their family. Restaurants, movie theaters and those kind of things are usually open though. That answered my question. I was going to ask, you know, was it because of some religious uh, background or influences? But rather, well, it is, but she she said it was. But rather, it's uh, the work, the, the day off from work. Imagine if we actually uh, gave workers rights in the United States. That would be, that's insane. <laughs> Cash culture. Let's see this. Even if you're only in Germany for a day, you should make sure to carry cash on you. Germany has a pretty big cash culture and there might be quite a few occasions where you won't be able to pay electronically, like when you want to get something at a bakery, what? a kiosk, small stores that don't accept card payments, or things like parking machines. You can either get some cash from the ATM in Germany, but be aware that there will probably be an ATM fee and a currency conversion fee if your bank account isn't in euros, or you can also ask your bank at home to get some euros to you before you leave that might be the best option actually because that if i'm gonna be honest okay i already know about the card thing i've traveled internationally but that's one of the most shocking things in this video so far germany uses cash a lot if anything i would expect germany to be pioneering the the cashless society like the mobile paying the um what the mobile wallets all that stuff they i'm not saying you guys don't but that's shocking. That's really shocking. That way you'll also have some cash right when you arrive in case you need it. What you shouldn't do though is exchange money at the airport because it'll be a lot more expensive. I guess that makes sense. There's, I mean, maybe she was just talking about local markets and things. We, we're the same, same situation. But if cash is really that 
I mean, that's pretty shocking. I wonder why that is. The offer it's less than ten dollars a month with an annual. Need to know about driving in Germany because there are a few differences that you should be aware of before you get behind the wheel. The first thing is that gas is a lot more expensive in Germany than it is in the U.S. It's and y'all blow through times it. As expensive. So if you were gonna rent a car and just drive around Germany or Europe that's not gonna be as cheap as you probably expected. In fact, it might be a lot cheaper to get around by bus or train. We have a pretty good train system all over Germany and over Europe too. And especially if you're just staying within one city in Germany, public transportation might be a more convenient and less stressful option for you too, because traffic can be a little crazy, the drivers can be aggressive, and parking in a German city is usually a nightmare. When you need to get gas, I'd be an aggressive driver too if I was whipping around in a German car, man. But yeah, that all across Europe, driving is kind of not subsidized. Public transport is the way to go. But uh, unless you're on that Autobahn, phew. You should know that you pump first in Germany and then pay afterwards. And you don't usually pay at the pump, but you'll have to go inside afterwards to do so. That's so the regular crazy. gas in Germany is called Super, but of course you can always look at what it says inside of the gas cap as to what kind you should put in the tank. Then of course there are different driving laws in Germany, so be sure to check those out before you get on the streets. Two major things are that you can't turn right on red and you always need to watch out for cyclists and pedestrians, especially when turning right. I found that that's not really something that people learn in driver's ed in the States because in many American towns, people walking or riding their bike isn't really a thing. For everything else, like the street signs, speed limits, and driving on the highway, the Autobahn, you can check out my video on driving if you want to learn more. We need to watch that for sure. Oh, this is going to be an interesting one here. But no, completely right. America, you need a car to get around, especially if you're in suburbs. Public transport isn't a thing. Very unfortunate, but it's the truth. All right, here we go, drinking in public. Let's get to the important things here. This one might be kind of shocking to Americans. In Germany, it's legal to drink alcohol in public, and Germans do that a lot too, especially okay. in the summer. So don't be surprised by that, and who knows, maybe you're gonna try it too and get a cool experience out of it if you can just sit by the river on a warm summer night with a 50 cent beer from the corner store. And yes, beer is pretty cheap in Germany, but it's still very, very good. She said, who knows, maybe, maybe? I'm sorry, if I'm in Germany. I'm taking full advantage. <laughs> oh, that sounds amazing. Now, if you visit Germany as a tourist, you're probably gonna spend a lot of time at restaurants. So here's a few things that you should know about that. So when you walk into a restaurant, you can usually just seat yourself and don't have to wait for someone to show you to a table. Then you won't get ice in your drinks unless you ask for it. But even then, it'll probably just be a couple of ice cubes. The Why? sizes of drinks are also pretty small in comparison to the States, just like almost mm. everything in Germany. And water is not free at German restaurants, so if you order water, Water, you'll usually get bottled water, either still or sparkling, which Germans are huge fans of. Once you're done, you have to ask the waiter for the check. They won't bring it to you automatically, and you're probably gonna have to flag them down because they're not gonna check on you all the time. And then they'll usually have you pay right at the table, either with cash, or you can also pay with your card in most restaurants, but you'll have to let them know because they'll have to get the little device first. Now, when it comes to tipping, we tip around 10% in Germany, and the way it works is that you just tell Tell the waiter directly what you want to round it up to. So if your check is 20 euros and you want to tip them 2 euros, you just tell them to make it 22 and you'll get the change for that. It works the same way with card payments too, so make sure to tell them the tip before you insert your card. Also, just a heads up, the waiters in Germany might seem kind of cold compared to the ones in the US. You'll have to flag them down if you need something, and they're probably not going to be as friendly, which has to do with the fact that they don't have to rely on tips as much, but also with the German customer service in general. Oh, oh, we're about to get into that. Okay, that's intriguing. 10% uh, tipping, so tipping is still expected. That's interesting because... I honestly thought it would be tipping wasn't expected. United States, we're probably around 15, 20% on average for tips. But water costs money. Really? What about tap water? Why would. I don't understand why that's a thing. It's so weird. Again, this is only one source. This is only one person for, who's been to Germany or lived in Germany talking. So I wanted to hear from a bunch of different people in the comments on like what's actually the truth. I'm not saying this is fa false, but, you know, if something 
is different from your experience. If you're from Germany or if you live in Germany, let me know in the comments, please. All right, customer service, let's go. Please don't let it scare you off, but the customer service in Germany is pretty bad compared to the oh. US, at least in my opinion. I know that many Germans are gonna disagree with me in the comments, but if you're used to American standards, it's very likely that some of the people working in German customer service will make you feel like you're bothering them or annoying them. If that happens, please don't think that it has anything to do with you being a tourist or not speaking German. It's nothing personal. They treat me like that too. Of course, there's also many great people working in customer service who are lovely to talk to, but unfortunately, that's not the standard in Germany. Honestly, I understand that. I get it. Customer service is a very difficult job. You have to deal with the most rude people. So I get it, you know? That's honestly, I'd, I'd rather have that than someone fake smiling in my face who isn't going to be helpful. If someone's going to be like, you know, this job sucks, but I'm going to help you out. Like, you can be rude all you want or nonchalant and acting like you don't care, but that's better than someone just completely lying to your face and be like, what can I do for you? And then it proceeds to do absolutely nothing for you. And you have to cut through bureaucratic red tape to just figure like the most simple thing. Let's go. Paying to pee. P <laughs> Paying to pee. Whoa. What are you? What's going on here? One of the most popular topics of complaints among tourists is that you have to pay to use the bathroom in Germany. Now, what? it's possible that that's going to be the case. Like at rest stops on the highway, you'll find these bathrooms with turnstiles. And at some public bathrooms, there will be a person sitting with a tipping plate. But that's not always the case. And at restaurants, it's usually free. But yes, sometimes you'll have to pay for using a public bathroom. So it's always best to carry some change on you just in case. Okay. Germans like rules and they like to follow the rules and that includes stopping at a red pedestrian light. So no jaywalking in Germany. And by that I mean that you won't see a lot of Germans jaywalk and many of them don't like it when others do it either. Which by the way applies to other rules too. You may even get reminded by strangers to follow the rules. Besides the whole no jaywalking thing, some of these rules are to stay right on escalators to let people pass on the left. Yeah. And very, very important, don't walk or stand in bike lanes. Next to the sidewalk, there's usually a bike lane and there are many, many cyclists oh. in German cities. And if you block the bike lane, you may either cause an accident or you'll probably have a person on their bike ring their bell at you or, or even yell at you. They're definitely gonna yell at you. I would too, that's annoying. In case you happen to turn on the TV or wanna go see a movie in Germany, don't be surprised if your favorite American actor suddenly speaks German because almost everything is dubbed in Germany. We do consume a lot of American movies and shows in Germany, but Germans aren't big fans of subtitles. And even though more and more people do consume English media in their original version nowadays, the norm in Germany is the dubbed versions. Some movie theaters do show movies in the original versions too though. You'll just have to look out for the little edition behind the title that says OV. Okay, that's fair, that's Many fair. Many of you have probably heard the cliche that Germans are pretty reserved and rather cold, and there's actually a lot of truth to that. So before you go to Germany, you should definitely know that Germans don't usually talk to strangers a lot, and we aren't big on small talk. So don't expect to have some nice conversations with people at the store or something. It depends. I can just imagine like this American lady going into Germany and, you know, like the elevator conversations, the standing in line at the supermarket conversations, like that's so big in the United States. Just with random strangers be like, oh, this lines are never, this not list lines never any shorter. And like, yeah, come here every day. You know, you just random strangers will always talk. Even I do that sometimes. So I can just imagine like a lady from the United States going to Germany and trying to initiate some small talk with some Germans and they just stare at her, give her a glare. <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's fair though. That's just a cultural thing. It's not a big deal. Small talk. So don't expect to have some nice conversations with people at the store or something. It depends on who you interact with, of course, but at first sight, Germans can come off as unfriendly, especially when compared to Americans. It's nothing personal though, it's That's just fine. a cultural difference. But if you ever have a concrete question, don't hesitate to approach a German and ask them, because Germans are usually very glad to help. 
This is what now, I was about to ask. Now, how should I ask someone for advice if I don't speak German? Yeah. Well, most Germans do know some English. They may have a thick accent and may not be able to have a full conversation, but they'll definitely be able to, you know, give you directions or tell you the price of something. Many Germans also speak pretty good English, so those of you who come to Germany and do speak some German and want to use it, don't be thrown off if you speak to someone in German and they reply in English. It's a thing that many Germans do and I know that it can come off as rude in a way, but they usually just want to make life easier for the two of you because they know that German is a difficult language and if they think that their English is better than your German, they may think that they can make the conversation more efficient by switching to English. So please don't be offended by that. If you really, really want to practice your German, I'm sure you can just ask them to stick with German. I, I have heard that. I have heard that German is an incredibly difficult language to learn. So maybe we'll have to watch a video uh, learning some German vocabulary. We'll see how many words I can remember. Housing differences. Here we go. The last point on my list is mainly targeted at people who want to move to Germany. Now, when you move into a new place, be prepared that it might come entirely empty. And by that, I mean that there won't even be blinds, curtains or light bulbs in it and oftentimes not even a kitchen. So the space where the kitchen is supposed to be will just have a bunch of cables and pipes stick out of the wall and you'll be responsible for getting all of the appliances and cabinets. Also, leases are usually unlimited in Germany, unless it's like a sublease or something. But in the US, I found that a lease usually has an end date, one year in a lot of cases, and then you can either renew it or end it. You won't have to do that in Germany. Also, when looking for a place, you should be aware that a bedroom can be really small in Germany. So you should always look at the size of the room or the apartment and not just the number of bedrooms, because a three bedroom apartment in Germany could be smaller than a one bedroom in the States. Also, bedrooms don't have closets in Germany, so you'll need a wardrobe or a dresser to put your clothes in. And there are many, many more differences regarding German and American houses. So if you're interested in that, you can just click here and check out my video about differences at home. So those were 13 things that I... Re okay, that's that's basically the end of the video there. Um, I really enjoyed that. Some of those were shocking. The biggest shock to me, I think... I'd say the cash thing. That's still is shocking. The cash and... The water. The water is really surprising to me too. Because I don't think Germany has any water quality issues that I know of. I don't know. You guys got to let me know about that in the comments down below. Other than that though, very interesting video. And I do hope to visit Germany at some point in the future as well. Um, one of my roommates is actually, he actually lived in Germany for a couple years. So there's a lot, a lot of uh, intriguing aspects of Germany that, uh, are beginning to lure me in as you guys can tell i've been doing a, a lot of german reactions and you know we have all of europe to react to so much stuff to learn about and places to explore i've been on australia for quite some time but i figure it's time we uh move on that doesn't mean we're done with australia we'll still do some australian reactions here and there but um you know there's just so much more to check out and that was the point of this channel was to explore as much as possible so that's exactly what we'll be doing Hit the like button, guys. Hit subscribe. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Peace.